Iran's nuclear advancements to Gaza war. Hello and welcome. This is NewsFest at this your daily source of news bites locally, regionally and internationally. The Israel-Palestinian conflict has long been a source of pain and suffering in the Middle East, but its consequences are now reaching beyond the region and affecting the nuclear diplomacy involving Iran. The recent flare-up in the Gaza war has made the efforts to rein in Iran's nuclear program more challenging and urgent. In this video, we will explore the latest developments focusing on the enrichment of uranium by Iran, the challenges faced by the United States and its allies, and the diplomatic intricacies surrounding the issue. Stay tuned. Iran's nuclear progresses. Recent reports from the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA, reveal a worrying advancement in Iran's nuclear capabilities. With uranium enriched up to 60% purity close to weapons grade, the stockpile is reportedly sufficient for the production of three bombs, according to confidential AIEA documents seen by Reuters. Despite consistent denials by Iran regarding its interest in nuclear weapons, the situation on the ground seems to be moving toward a dangerous direction. Iran's nuclear program has been a matter of international concern for decades, as it widely suspected that Iran is pursuing covert nuclear weapons program under the guise of civili civilian one. Iran claims that its nuclear activities are slowly for peaceful purposes such as generating electricity and producing medical isotopes. However, the international community has been skeptical of Iran's intentions, especially through the discovery of several undeclared nuclear facilities in the past. In 2015, after years of negotiations, Iran and six world powers, the United States, China, Russia, France, Britain, and Germany reached a landmark agreement known as the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or the Iran Nuclear Deal. Under the deal, Iran agreed to limit its nuclear activities in exchange for the lifting of economic sanctions imposed by the United Nations, the European Union, and the United States. The deal was held as a diplomatic breakthrough that could prevent a nuclear arms race in the Middle East and avert a potential military confrontation. However, the deal faced opposition from some regional actors such as Israel and Saudi Arabia, who viewed Iran as a threat to their security and influence. They argued that the deal was too lenient and did not address Iran's ballistic missile program and its support for militia groups in the region. They also flared that the deal would empower Iran economically and politically and enable it to resume its nuclear activities through the expression of some of the deal's provisions. In 2018, former U.S. President Donald Trump withdrew from the deal, calling it the worst deal ever and reimposing sanctions on Iran. Trump accused Iran of violating the spirit of the deal and pursuing a fanatical quest for nuclear weapons. He also claimed that the deal did not address Iran's malign behavior in the region, such as its involvement in the conflicts in Syria, Yemen, Iraq, and Lebanon. Trump's decision was met with criticisms from other parties to the deal, who urged Iran to remain committed to the deal and vote to protect it from the U.S. pressure. However, Iran responded to the U.S. withdrawal by gradually reducing its compliance with the deal, arguing that it was no longer receiving the economic benefits promised by the deal. Iran announced that it will increase its uranium enrich enrichment levels, expanding its centrifuge capacity, resume its research and development activities, and reduce its cooperation with the IAEA. Iran also threatened to leave the deal a non-proliferation treaty, which aims to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons if its demands were not met. The recent escalation in the Gaza war has added a layer of complexity to the efforts to rein in the Iran's nuclear program. The Gaza war, which erupted December 2023 after Hamas fired rockets at Israel in response to Israel's policy raids on the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound has resulted in hundreds of casualties and widespread destruction. The war has also exposed the deep divisions and animosity in the region, as well as the limitations and challenges of the international community in resolving the conflict. The Gaza war has also had implications for the nuclear diplomacy involving Iran, as it has highlighted the role and influence of Iran in the region. Iran is widely regarded as the main sponsor and ally of Hamas, the Islamist group that contours the Gaza Strip and considered a terrorist organization by Israel, the United States, and the European Union. Iran provides Hamas with financial, 
military and political support as well as ideological guidance. Iran views Hamas as a strategic seat and resistance force against Israel, which Iran considers its arch enemy and traits to its national security and regional interests. The recent aggression by Iran-backed Hamas against Israel has significantly altered the diplomatic landscape attacked on U.S. and coalition troops in Iraq and Syria by Iran's regional proxy militias further complicate matters. And the current political environment engaging in negotiations with Iran on the nuclear issue is viewed as potential vulnerability for the Biden administration, which faces pressure from its domestic and regional allies to take the tougher stance on Iran and its proxies. Diplomatic challenges, efforts to revive the nuclear deal between Iran and the world powers abandoned by the former U.S. President Donald Trump in 2018, faced significant hurdles. The Biden administration, constrained by domestic political considerations, with elections looming, finds itself in a difficult position. The prospects of engaging in formal arguments or negotiations to curb Iran's nuclear ambitions has further complicated by the ongoing conflict in Gaza. The Biden administration, which took office in January 2020, has expressed its willingness to rejoin the nuclear deal, provided that Iran returns to full compliance with its obligations. The Biden administration has also signaled its intention to build on the deal and address other issues of concern, such as Iran's ballistic missile program, and its regional activities. However, the Biden administration has also faced resistance from some of its domestic and regional allies who oppose the deal and demand a more comprehensive and stringent approach to Iran. The Biden administration, which faces midterm elections in November 2023, is also mindful of the political ramifications of its policy toward Iran. The Biden administration is aware that any perceived concessions to Iran could be exploited by its political opponents, who accuse it of being weak and naive on foreign policy. The Biden administration is also wary of alienating its key allies in the region, such as Israel and Saudi Arabia, who have expressed their dissatisfaction and distrust of the deal and have urged the United States to adopt a more confrontational and coercive strategy towards Iran. The prospects of engaging in informal agreements or negotiations curb Iran's nuclear ambitions is further complicated by the ongoing conflict in Gaza, which has strained the relations between the U.S. and its allies, as well as between the United States and Iran. The U.S., which has expressed its support for Israel's right to self-defense, has blocked several attempts by the U.N. Security Council to issue a statement calling for its fire, has faced criticism from some of its allies, such as France, Germany, and Britain, who have called for an immediate end to the hostilities and resumption of the peace process. The United States has also faced condemnation from Iran, which has accused it of being complicit in Israel's crimes and has vowed to continue support for the Palestinian cause. The Gaza conflict has also created a dilemma for the United States and its allies who are trying to balance their interests and values in the region. On one hand, they want to preserve their strategic partnership with Israel, which they consider a veteran ally and a bastion of democracy in the region. On the other hand, they want to avoid further escalation and stability in the region, which could jeopardize their efforts to contain Iran's nuclear program and promote regional cooperation and integration. They also want to uphold their commitment to human rights and international law, which they believe are essential for the long-term peace and security of the region. Paralysis in democracy. Diplomats speaking on condition of anonymity describe a sense of paralysis in the diplomatic arena. The Biden administration is cautious about adding fuel to the fire, especially under the heightened tensions in the Middle East. The diplomatic efforts to reward the nuclear deal have been stilled when the parties to the deal held indirect talks in Vienna, Australia, dated by the European Union. The talks aim to identify the steps that both sides would need to take to restore deal and signal their actions. However, the talks have been hampered by mutual distrust and divergent expectations, as well as by external factors such as the Gaza war in the upcoming presidential election. The United States and Iran have both expressed their willingness to return to the deal, but they have also insisted that the other side should make the first move. 
the U.S. has demanded that Iran reverse its nuclear violations and comply fully with the deal before it would consider lifting the sanctions. Iran has demanded that the U.S. lift all the sanctions imposed by the Trump administration before it would consider scaling back its nuclear activities. Both sides have also raised additional issues that they want to address, such as Iran's ballistic missile program and regional activities and the U.S. security guarantees and compensation for the damage caused by the sanctions. The parties to the deal have also faced difficulties coordinating their positions and actions as they have different interests and perspectives on the issue. The European Union, which has played a key role in facilitating the talks, has tried to bridge the gap between the U.S. and Iran and to preserve the deal as a multilateral achievement and pillar of the global non-proliferation region. China and Russia, which have maintained close ties with Iran, have opposed the U.S. sanctions, have also supported the talks, but they have also expressed their reservations and criticisms of the U.S. policy toward Iran. This was our news analysis for the day. Thank you very much for staying with us. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, and share this video. Thank you.